Hello everyone, welcome to Papaw's Projects. It's time for another practical prance. Alright, in this episode of Practical Prints, we are going to be de designing uh, some replacement feet for a wrought iron chair that my wife has and she's restoring. So, ones that uh, were on it were kind of blown out. Bottom. It's just a simple little rubber cap. Try to recreate this in Blender and print it off on a 3D printer and TPU. So, before we get started though, um, let me ask if you would please go and hit the subscribe button for me and the bell if you would like to receive notifications anytime I upload new content. Trying to grow this channel and get it up over a thousand subscribers, so your support is greatly appreciated. Now, let's get on with it. Let's go to Blender and a little screen share. All right, so let's pull up Blender. And as you'll notice, it's looking a little bit different. This is the new Blender 2.8 beta version. Decided to commit to just continuing from this point on in the new version because it's here here to stay so I might as well go ahead and start learning the new layout now a lot of things have changed the uh, graphical user interface is a lot different seems to be a lot better layout a lot of things I like about it the problem is I have to find all the items that I used to use uh, learning how to use 2.79 so now I have to relearn where things are at so I apologize if I have to fumble around to find a tool but I figured I, I might as well go ahead and start learning the new version now instead of wasting my time learning the older version and then switch later so we will start here to make these caps for that chair we are going to start with a cylinder so let's add a mesh cylinder used to there would be a little box over here you could set all your dimensions now you have to do it over in the transform tab you're going to make this let's start with the outer shell so let's make this 12 12 by 15 okay. our outer, outer shell and let's go ahead and switch over to wireframe and let's switch over to edit mode and Go ahead and start the screen viewer. That'll do is it'll give you what I click on the mouse and any keys that I type. They'll show up down here in the left corner. All right, so let's start with start with stretching it out because the legs are two eight millimeter rods coming down side by side I'm going to select half of it and I am going to hit E for extrude X for the direction and 12 millimeters okay enter alright now that looks kind of jacked up and it is but I think we can fix it so here's what it looks like it still has the basic shape that I was looking for so it's something to work with alright now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to top view 
and I am delete these vertices delete vertices and that gives me two half circles fill the size that I need in tall 12 across 24 fix it all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to edge select in edit mode and I'm going to select this edge and I'm going to hold the shift key down and select this edge and I'm F and generate let's try it again F there we go my keyboard seems to be a little bit dirty I noticed the N key was sticking well failing I guess out of it and the N key started working again but I need to blow it out okay we're gonna do the same thing to the front select the first one shift select the second one and then hit F that gives us a face now we're back to a oval that is more like what I wanted okay so we're gonna come down here on the bottom we're going to give it a bottom, so I'm going to hold the Alt key down, like the edge, and by holding the Alt key down, it gives you the entire edge, everything it's connected to continuously. And then I'm going to hit F. All right, now we should have the outside solid view, and we do. Okay, looking good so far. All right. Now we need to let, let me go ahead and rename that and we're going to call that the outer. That's the outer skin of this cap. So now let's make the inner skin. Let's go to add cylinder. Control Z. Okay. Go back to object mode first. Wireframe. Okay, now let's do add mesh. And now we can put the dimensions in here. Need this is going to be the cavity that the legs slide down into. So I need to give it slight clearance all the way around. So we're going to make it 8.25 millimeters because the legs are 8 millimeter rods by 8.25 millimeters. Let's see, we made the cap 15. So let's five millimeters. There we go. Whole cap is 15 millimeters, but I don't want I don't want it to come to the bottom, so let's make it 12. That should give it three millimeters of bottom. Okay. And we're centered. Alright, let's move it up. Twelve. 15, 12, 13, up 1.5. Hopefully, will bring us right to the top. And it does. All right, so that gives us 3 millimeters, half, 1.5, 2.5, 3 millimeters material on the bottom. So when that leg slides down in here, hopefully, it will not punch through the bottom. Okay, so now let's take and let's duplicate that.
shift D Let's see if we can move this one. Eight millimeters to the right. Work. Okay, now I see a problem. I made the outer way too big. X should not be 24. Eight and a quarter or eight. Ten. Four millimeters too big. So let's make that 20 and see if we can fix it. There we go. It's fixable. Still, our double wrought iron leg will slide down into those holes. Okay, now what should we do next? Let's see. Got to do some work. Work on the inner here first. Edit mode. Get rid of this little gap in the middle. Delete vertices. Those two as well. Okay, now we have to go back. Object mode, select the other. Delete those vertices. Okay. So now, let's see what we got. We'll go to object mode and let's select both of these objects. Shift key, pick the object. Okay, so now we can edit both of them. Now let's join these two. Shift, whoops, edge mode. Select so let's select this edge and shift this edge and hit F. If select F. Hmm. By this side. Shift select F. It is not doing it. Okay, let's try let's try something else. Let's go back to objects. Both selected. And let's join them. 
I do not recall the command for join, so I'm going to hit the space bar and search for join. Now they are one object, even though there's a gap in there. So now maybe we can go in and edit it. So let's select this edge, this edge, face. Bingo. Okay, now let me select this edge, this edge, and face. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, let's go back to object mode and just take a look at it in solid view. This is going to have to have this piece here is going to have to have a bottom as well because touching the bottom I don't want the legs to come all the way through down to here I want the legs to come into here and then stop and have three millimeters of rubber underneath so we need to put a bottom in this let's see if we can do that okay so let's go See what happens if I hit Alt and select. Perfect. Now keep your fingers crossed if I hit F for face, hopefully it'll put what we need. Looks like it did good. Okay, let's go back to object mode. Solid view, and let's see what we got. Looks like there's a bottom in it. Hell, but uh, let me see if I can. Like the face, and I've not done this yet, but let's see if we can give it a color and make sure that it has its own color. New. And it does nothing. There, it gave that part red. Okay, so there was an I thought there was an X ray view somewhere. But maybe that's uh, let's go object mode maybe it's there third div solid and wire no nope. I don't know where the x-ray view is I'll figure that out later anyway so let's see what we got okay so we have our inner shell with a bottom and our outer shell with a bottom right now we have to make this thing manifold we gotta close up this gap at the top so let's do that let's go select I'm sorry, I'm just looking. Okay, so we have cylinder, which should be the outer. One, which is the inner. Okay, so we'll select that one, and we will select this one, so that we can work on both of them at the same time. Um, Not sure if we have to or not, but let's go ahead and do that. Let's try. Okay, join. Now they're all one part. Okay. Go back to wireframe.
and we will go into edit mode color so the, I'm pretty sure we have a bottom in there okay so now let's see if we can uh, squared up seven All right. Go to edge select. This edge. Shift. Select this edge. And put a face. that one face I'm sure there's probably a faster way to do this I don't know it yet Okay, so faces I do believe this is going to be a lot nicer setup seems to flow a lot better once you find where they've moved everything to Fix quite a few things in there that were slowing you down. Like, for example, when you want to select vertices, you just, it's more like a normal program where you, if you're in selection mode, you just drag a box. You don't have to hit B and tell it box before you. There's a lot of just little stuff like that they have fixed in here and from what I understand the biggest factor in this software is that they've changed the rendering engine they didn't change it they added one it's called EV it's based around gaming engines it's quality Photo quality is supposedly a little bit less than cycles, but good enough for the average animation or whatever you're doing. Now, if you want to go professional, then EV is not the render engine you're going to want to use. But they still have the cycles engine in there. At probably should quit talking while I'm clicking because I'm but we're almost there okay so we're going and that one 
corner. Okay, so that gets us curves. Now let's do a couple more here. We'll join this one, this one, this one into a face, this one, this one, face, this one, this one into a face. We'll just work our way out here. So we have the whole thing closed up. Oops, wrong button. There and there and face. That and that. that. Do a face. Do one more. Let's try one more. That one. Okay. Hmm, that's weird. This has, uh, seems like it has one more than this side did. What happens over here? Okay, so we'll go this one. Okay, so this one, this one, face, make a face, let's make a face, this one, this one, this one, face, almost got it, bear with me, face, Shift select, shift F. Base. Okay. So let's uh, know if this is going to work, but let's give it a try. Let's say this, this, put that extra. Last one we just did, and this. See what happens. F, F, F. There we go. I'm gonna fix the keyboard or get a new one, I guess. Try that over here. Let's see if it works. Okay, so this one, shift, this one, up that extra one, and now face. Okay, we have closed this thing in. Take a look at it in solid view. Okay, I don't know where that extra face came from but seems like it's okay so let's go back to object mode and in object mode it looks pretty good all right see where the extra face came from you guys can see it or not but right here this is more rounded than this I would say that I probably deleted a couple extra vertices right here that I probably shouldn't have. But you never we're gonna do a little tweaking on it anyway. Okay, so now we have one item. Don't have to worry about that. It's looking like workable cap right now. But I want to pretty it up a little bit. Let's see if we can edit mode and let's see. I want to subdivide loop cut. 
Now, edit mode, let's say all, all, and bisect edge. Okay, maybe I do want to do a loop cut. Is that loop cut? Yes, loop cut. All right, we're going to try that. That one there. There. Let's see. I want to start at the bottom, come out, up. I think that'll be enough. Okay. So let's take. I don't want to have to use supports on this, but I think we can get away with a little bit of an angle here. So I'm going to say Alt and click this. I want to get off of faces. Alt, click the edge, okay. and then I want S for scale. Doesn't look bad. Alt, well, let's turn off what we've selected. Double click the A, we'll turn that off. Now we're going to say Alt and select this ring. Let's see if I can move it. I'd like to move it. I like that. Okay. Now let's deselect AA. Alt, select this edge, and hit. A little bit. Okay. A. One last time. Alt, select this edge, and this time I want to hit S for scale. Give it some taper. Okay, that's a little bit nicer profile. Still got the meat down here where it is important. Still got the meat down here where it's important, but it's got a little bit of rounded edge. Looks so cheap. Let's go back to object mode. Like. All right. We have a winner. Okay, so let me save this file. Tried to make one out of PLA last night. And it didn't fit and it didn't turn out right. It's all square and I didn't like it, so decided to start over. Okay, so we have our cap and let me export it. STL file, export, STL. Oops. Should have left. Two. Export. Okay, so now what I will do is I will 
video off, print it. Shouldn't take long for for this, so I will I will shut the recording off, uh, print them, and then start the recording back up, so you can see the finished results all in this same video. Some of my other practical prints, I've had to do a follow up video because they were going to take hours to print, but I think this one will print pretty quick. So hang on just a second, and I will be back with the printed part. Alrighty, I got the pieces printed out, printed them out in Strong Hero 3D, I believe it was. Strong Hero 3D, white, TPU. So, I think it turned out pretty well. Looks good. Feels good, and it fits. I tried it on. I will show you the picture I took. I put them on and took a picture and then took this one off so I could show you on the camera again. So let me pull up that picture. Oh, let me turn that, uh, turn that animation off. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm gonna turn it off now. And there's the picture and there's the caps so it's just an old chair she's gonna repaint it caps were worn out I don't have any black TPU so it had to be in white but they turned out well they just down to a point here and on they stretched on there very nice and tight and they're not coming off and I think it's gonna work out well so I thank you for taking the time to join me for this Practical Prince and I hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope you saw something uh, you saw something you liked. I hope you learned something. I know I did. I learn every time I fire this thing up. So I just thought I would share as I go along. I know a lot of you are way beyond this but uh, surely there's a few people out there that can benefit. So that's why I do it. Uh, I'm going to close out here and tell everyone to have a wonderful evening and don't forget to ring that bell and I will see you in the next episode of Practical Prints or Blender Basics or even maybe the live stream. I've started getting into the live streaming, still working some bugs out there, but definitely when you see me go live, come on by. I'd love to have you. The more the merrier. So, everyone have a wonderful evening, and I will talk to you again soon. Thank you.